A $176 million class action lawsuit has been filed in response to the COVID-19 outbreak at the Holyoke Soldiers Home, where 76 veterans died after testing positive. Good Friday evening, everyone. Welcome to Western Mass News at 6. I'm Chris Pisano. The lawsuit was filed against five former state and facility officials. Western Mass News reporter Audrey Russo joins us live from Springfield with more. Audrey. The lawsuit was filed here this morning at the U.S. District Court on State Street, and it's filed on behalf of a veteran who lived at the home but passed away after contracting COVID-19. Now, this all comes as the home's board of directors have passed a series of resolution, resolutions unanimously to improve the quality of the care at the facility. We expect, although it's a class action, to be adding name plaintiffs as time goes on. The estate of Joseph Snydak is currently the only plaintiff named in the class action lawsuit filed against the former Holyoke Soldiers Home officials. Snydak died after testing positive for COVID-19. Lawyers representing his estate claim Snydak's civil rights were violated by five former officials associated with the home. Basic epidemiology 101 is you do two things. You identify people who have the illness, and number two, if it's contagious, you isolate them. These are the five officials named in the lawsuit, including the former superintendent, medical director, nursing managers, and the former state secretary of the Department of Veterans Services. Attorney Thomas Lesser says the findings of the independent investigation into the outbreak ordered by Governor Baker show these five people failed to create a safe and healthy environment. In a response to a Western Mass News question, he says there have been cases in the past to support his complaint. There are certainly cases where a failure to act in a pandemic is actionable. When asked if they plan to sue the state as an entity, Lesser says they must first send a presentment letter to the Commonwealth. Lesser says one person they do not plan to bring action against, State Health and Human Services Secretary Mary Lou Sutters. Came with a response team and did the appropriate things, which were isolating people with COVID-19, sending them to the hospitals, all things that should have happened weeks and weeks before. This lawsuit comes after the Homes Board of Trustees passed a series of resolutions following the independent investigation, including the implementation of a permanent staffing schedule and requiring the superintendent or the deputy superintendent to hold a Massachusetts nursing home administrator license. The board also passed a resolution banning facility employees from taking a position on life-sustaining medical treatments like do not resuscitate orders. The independent investigation into the home detailed one nurse's account of seeing social workers call families and push them into changing their loved one's status to do not hospitalize. Meanwhile, Governor Baker was asked about the class action lawsuit, and while he declined to discuss the litigation, he says he's spoken to the families of the late vets. I am more than aware of, uh, of the pain and the, and, the, um, and the sadness and the loss that they feel. I reached out to the five individuals named as defendants in the class action lawsuit. All of them declined to make either a statement or a comment on the matter. Live in Springfield, Audrey Russo for Western Mass News. Audrey, thank you for that live report. Here's a quick look at today's numbers of COVID-19 cases. So far, the state reports 216 new cases with a total number of 106,487 in the Bay State. There were also 21 more deaths today. The statewide death toll now stands at 8,184. Massachusetts is one step closer to allowing restaurants to sell cocktails to go. The news spreading to many local restaurant owners who say well, they're excited to have more options for customers. Western Mass News reporter Lindsay Kane is live for us in Springfield with more. Lindsay. Chris, the general manager partner at Max's Tavern tells me that any chance to bring in more revenue is helpful to all restaurants right now. House and Senate lawmakers agreed to a to-go cocktail legislation on Thursday. This would allow restaurants to sell mixed drinks with takeout food. I appreciate any, uh, any approval of uh, more sales I can do for the restaurant, and I'm sure every other restaurant in the area does. I think it's a good thing, and it can't be, uh, it's going to be more than, more than a zero dollars uh, 
in the revenue stream, which is which is good for all restaurants right now. The bill caps the amount of alcohol a person can buy at 64 fluid ounces. But John Thomas, general manager partner for Max's Tavern, tells Western Mass News that the legislation will help attract more customers during the pandemic. I can make a cocktail dinner with this new legislation and have you, if you wanted to take it out and bring it home, bring it to the park, enjoy it somewhere else, you could be able to do that as well. While many restaurants have suffered in the midst of COVID-19, many liquor stores have been booming in sales. And one store owner tells Western Mass News this bill is not a threat to business. Liquor stores are still going to stay pretty steady, steady, pretty busy. It's going to definitely help the uh, restaurants, which is good. I'd like to see the local restaurants start getting busy. And with coronavirus restrictions still in place, Thomas says the additional options for customers will be beneficial to the restaurant. During this time, uh, any revenue stream is, is necessary and any, any additional revenue stream is necessary. We're, we're all fighting for all, all the dollars we possibly can to be able to pay their employees and pay the overhead. That stuff doesn't change and with the limited capacity hurts us a little bit more. Final votes are needed to send the bill to Governor Baker for signing. Live in Springfield, Lindsey Kane, Western Mass News. Lindsey, thank you for that live report. Many people heading down to the Big E Fairgrounds tonight to be among the first to sample the now open Sam Adams Beer Garden. It is part of the Big E Summer Weekends, and Western Mass News reporter Leon Purvis joins us live from our MGM studios. And he was there when it opened. So, Leon, how was it? Chris, the people I spoke with were excited to be able to sit down and have a beer at the Big E. Now, there are precautions in place where you must sanitize your hands before you enter. Employees are wiping down tables and everyone is spread apart. Now, Western Mass News caught up with the couple that got the first beer served. They've been waiting for this moment since coronavirus began. We made sure we were the first. We are so excited. I found out about this yesterday and I planned my entire day around it. I am so excited to be able to come out and be with people without being with people. It's perfect. It's just nice to get outside again, you know, and socialize in a safe manner. If there's a little bit of a line, that's okay. We'll take care of you. We'll get to you. Please be patient. Make sure you have your mask on. It's required by the state of Massachusetts and the Board of Health for West Springfield. o'clock tonight and they get, then again on Saturday. On Sunday they do close a bit earlier. We'll have that information on our website westernmassnews.com. Live in Springfield, Leon Purvis, Western Mass News. All right, Leon, thank you for that live report. Now to sports news. One day after Westfield State University announced the cancellation of their fall sports due to the coronavirus, more schools and conferences all across the region are following suit. The Atlantic 10, which includes UMass and all sports except football, says its fall seasons will be postponed until spring. That includes men's and women's soccer, field hockey, and volleyball. The news the same for fall sports at Western New England University. However, Springfield College announcing today there will be no sports season for the fall 2020 semester at all with no postponements. They say athletes, though, will be allowed to practice and train. In Northampton, in response to this weekend's expected hot temps, the city will be opening a cooling center this weekend in the Senior Center located at 67 Conn Street. The area will be open from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Sunday and Monday. Visitors will be required to wear masks upon arrival, sign a COVID-19 health screening form, and provide contact information. For more on this weekend's expected heat wave, let's turn things over to First Morning Meteorologist Jacob Wyckoff joining us now live from his home. Jacob, I'm assuming yeah, your Chris, AC is on. Uh, it is actually. I have a fan on right behind. Ah, me right well, there. there you go. Yeah, because I got the window open, and with the clouds that have cleared out, the sun shining right on me, it's actually starting to heat up a little bit, uh -huh. and that's, i got to have that fan on. Otherwise, I'd be just dripping with sweat right down the back of my neck. Uh, all right, so as we look outside on our Springfield Skycab, we can see uh, some of the nice conditions. The clouds have cleared out really nicely. If you want to dine al fresco, tonight would be a night to do so because looking ahead at the extended forecast, I just don't see a good evening that you're going to be able to do this without just sweating your pants off. We do have the blue skies that are moving on in, the clouds clearing nicely on our satellite and radar. We also have uh, a couple of showers out towards the lower Hudson River Valley, 
we're not expecting any sort of inclement weather for us other than the warm temperatures. We're now in the mid 70s. Our temperatures actually rising into this evening with the cloud cover gone. Look at North Adams and Charlemont hitting 80 degrees. Wouldn't surprise me if we hit 80. Dew points also on the rise. We're at 70 degrees for a dew point in Westfield, 67 in Springfield. That is going to be a mainstay for this weekend. Our future cast showing the clearing outs for tonight. Sunshine all day tomorrow. Same story for Sunday. And it is just going to be a scorcher of a next couple of days. Tonight, middle 60s. The showers have ended. We're becoming clear. If you want to view Comet Neowise, tonight would be a good night to do it. Tomorrow, also a good night to see it. Our future or our forecast mid to low 90s for the next couple of days. So there's a check of the next couple of days.